Hello everybody and welcome to ECMATH. Today we're going to look at a special type of sequence called an arithmetic sequence. Before you watch this video you should probably be familiar with the general terminology of sequences and the general idea of summation and summation notation probably covered in a previous video or class. Uh, once you've checked on that come back here and let's talk about arithmetic sequences. So we'll get to the formal definition in a minute but let's lead with an example. A finite arithmetic sequence AN goes like this. Uh, the first term is 2, the second term is 5, the third term is 8, the fourth term is 11, the fifth term is 14, and the nth term is 68. How many terms are in this sequence? And first, let's uh, maybe we should ask a question. What does this word arithmetic mean? Like we said, we have an arithmetic sequence, and is that a useful piece of information? Well, uh, we can look at the terms of the sequence and study how it's growing. And specifically in this case, we can look at how it's growing and observe that from 2 to 5 is a difference of adding 3. From 5 to 8 is also a difference of adding 3. From 11, 8 to 11 is a difference of adding 3. And from 11 to 14 is a difference of adding 3. This is called the constant difference. And that constant difference in this case is 3, and that constant difference is the key feature of an arithmetic sequence compared to any other kind. Um, by the way, it's called difference because you can also find 3 by doing uh, two terms subtracted, which is why it's called a difference. So you could do 8 minus 5 and get positive 3 also. You know, two, any two consecutive terms could give you that difference. Now, before we give you any formulas, let's see if we can maybe figure out a formula for this type of sequence. Uh, because if we can find a formula, then we could probably solve it uh, for n to figure out how many terms we would need to get all the way down to 68. Uh, 68 is sufficiently large that I don't think getting a calculator and just pressing plus 3 a bunch of times would be in a very efficient way, although I guess you could. Um, but let's analyze some stuff. So it looks like we have a first term. So we could definitely say that, all right, our last term should be our first term. And then we should probably add some stuff onto it. Well, let's add 3 to it. Now, say I'm going further down in the sequence. Say I'm going to the fifth term. Right? I'm going from A1 to A5. How many times have I added 3? Well, I've added 3 four times. There's four 3s there that I've added on. So to go from A1 to A5, I would add uh, 3 times 4, or 12. Oh yeah, 2 plus 12 is 14. Uh, but in general, we could probably say that AN would be 2 plus 3, N minus 1. Now why is there a minus 1 there? Well, just like we said, uh, to go from the first term to the fifth term, even though that's a 5, there's only four 3s that I've added on. There's four you know, differences between terms. So that's why this is N minus 1, is there's always one less. Well, that's probably enough. Uh, so this is called, that's the difference, 3. And this is just an n minus 1. Um, it's probably enough to find our last term. Why don't we try setting this up? A n is 68. So we could say, okay, 68 is equal to 2 plus 3 n minus 1. And notice that we were asked how many terms are in the sequence. Well, that's n that I'm looking for. And what's the only variable left? n. So we should be able to solve for this. Uh, so as we can take away 2, so we get 66 is equal to 3n minus 1. Instead of multiplying that 3 out, like you could obviously do that, uh, I think it's easier to divide by 3. At 22 is equal to n minus 1. And so 21 is equal to n. And if 21 is equal to n, then in this sequence, there are 21 terms. So we were able to solve this problem using the fact that this arithmetic sequence has this constant difference pattern. And we were able to sort of derive a, a version of a formula for this type of sequence. And now we're going to go a little more uh, specific and talk about the, the rules and what the official version of this formula is. So here are our key definitions for arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence, finite or infinite, with a constant common difference between consecutive terms. So uh, when we say constant common difference, those are the key ideas here, constant common difference, we mean that if you have the nth term and you take away the term before it, which we write as a n minus 1, that will always equal d for 
all n. That is, no matter where you are in the sequence, the difference of two consecutive terms should always be the same thing, uh, and that will give you your, your um, how the sequence is growing. And since it has that predictable pattern that the difference is always the same, the generalized term of an arithmetic sequence can be given by this formula. A n, that's the nth term, is a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So what do all these things mean? Well, a1 is the first term. n is the number of terms. d is that common difference. And a n is the nth term that you are trying to find. So if you know the first term and the difference and the number of terms, you can find any term you want. Um, and then, of course, problems will give you, you know, you can get any three of those and find the fourth one, depending on the type of problem you're looking at. Um, but this is our generalized formula for an arithmetic sequence right here. Um, yeah. If you stare at it for long enough, the form for an arithmetic sequence, you'll notice that it looks a lot like the form of a linear function, because in some sense, they are really the same. A sequence is just a function defined only on the positive integers, whereas a function is defined for all real x. But the format's the same. They have a predictable unit of change. So let's graph a potentially an arithmetic sequence. Well, you would start with the first term, and then there would be some common difference, so you'd go up by the sum amount, and every time you go over 1, you'd go up by the same amount. So that pattern would be a bunch of dots in a line. Uh, you wouldn't start at zero, right? You'd start at the first term, um, which is why we have this kind of matches with this weird n minus 1 thing going on. Um, and you would only go up or down through the, the first quadrant like that. Um, mx plus b, of course, you could have a b value and an m value. And you would grow in both directions with a solid line, not dots. But notice that the idea of a change in y and a change in x is pretty much the same for both things. They have a constant slope in the case of lines and a constant difference in the case of arithmetic sequences. And these are really very similar things. And in fact, with the arithmetic sequence formula, if you really want to, you can multiply out that d and make it a1 plus dn minus d. And of course, d is just a constant. So you could just be like, that's really a1 minus d plus dn d times n, and this is like your b, and this is like your mx. You know, it's like just a different rearrangement. That's obviously not a very useful form. The one we gave you at the top is the most useful form, uh, but you can, it really is like a uh, linear equation. Just one brief side note. Um, remember our recursive definitions of sequences where we base uh, the next term on the term that came before? You can write a really simple, nice recursive definition for an arithmetic sequence. I will say it's not very useful to do so, um, but it can help if you're tr just trying to explore an arithmetic sequence problem. So a recursive definition might look like this. Uh, in a recursive definition, you always state the first term. So we'd state a1 here is 2. I'm just using the same sequence from the intro problem. Uh, and then I would have to state the rule. And the rule in a recursive way is that a n, the next term, is the previous term, which we write as a n minus 1, plus the difference 3. Uh, so that's sort of for this one. And the generalized recursive one would just be something like a1 is equal to a1, whatever that is, and a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus the difference. And the difference, of course, can be negative. We'll still write a plus and just uh, we'd have a, a negative number as the difference. But if you see a recursive definition that looks like this, and the key idea is you have this just a plus d, that's talking about an arithmetic sequence, and you can use the information there to go write a closed form version of it, which is probably the more useful version. So let's look at some problems that you can do with our definition of arithmetic sequence. Find the 11th term of an arithmetic sequence, for which the first term is 21, and the common difference is negative 5. So we can write out the definition first. I always like to do that. Uh, so a n is equal to um, a1 plus n minus 1 number of terms uh, minus 1 times the difference. All right. So we're looking for the 11th term. So n is going to be 11. Uh, the first term is 21, so a1 is 21. And the common difference is minus 5, so that would be d.
Let's plug all of those into the formula. I'll even write, I'll plug n in there. So the 11th term would be 21 plus 11 minus 1 times the difference, negative 5. Once you've set all that up, you really just have to simplify it. The 11th term should be negative 29. Uh, and, you know, you could, of course, list out 11 terms of the sequence to find it. That's a lot of work. Um, not really a very good use of time. Use the formula that you know. If you have your formula and you list your givens, you'll always be able to find the missing piece. Let's look at another type of problem. A sequence has the first term is 30, the 14th term is 121, and we are told that the sequence is arithmetic. So this might feel like there's not really a lot of information to go on. You just gave me two numbers. Uh, but remember that if we know it's arithmetic, that's effectively linear. And you, all you need to find the equation of a line is two points. So we have two points. Um, so we're going to find the equation and then we're going to use that equation to answer what was the 13th term after all. So the generalized form is again, an is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times the difference. Okay, well, we now we don't know a lot of stuff, but we, let's list what we do know. Uh, we know that a1 is 30. We know that a14 is 121, which means also that n is 14. So 121 is equal to 30 plus 13d. And this lets us solve for the common difference in the equation, which we can use to now find the 13th term. So let's solve for that. All right, so dividing by 13, we get that 7 is equal to that d value, which means that the sequence is increasing by 7 each time. So I know, then I could go write the equation out, but it's probably faster if I know the 14th term and I'm looking for the 13th term, I can do 121 minus 7, which is 114, and that should be the 13th term. Uh, so I have to go backwards in the sequence, I'm taking away 7 instead of adding 7. For arithmetic sequences, that's about it. Remember the formula that you have, list your givens, Think about what you're carefully trying to solve. There will always be enough information because we're giving you problems that you are able to solve. Plug things in, find what's missing, and then make sure you've answered the question, like giving the 13th term. And that's it. So now we're going to move on to series. How do you add up the terms of an arithmetic sequence?